on the spot because I don't know if he might know something. Hey, Rob, <laughs> um, what is going on with the river cleanup? Do we need to have people sign up for volunteers for that? How is that working? Do you know anything? We, I do not. Denny and I are trying to find the date. Okay. And we have not got the date yet. You're married. You can't have any dates. De Denny, yeah. Denny's on it now. He works for Boone County. He's going to get it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, lay it on me. <laughs> <laughs> not 
loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have not trusted you as our only Savior. We have not loved you as our highest good. We have not feared you more than the opinions of others. We confess to you, O Lord. Hear us as we bring you our private prayers. cry out to you, O oh God. Redeemer, you have purchased us from our sins by your blood. As you have made known, as you have made us your own, keep us as your children. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Let's continue by, by reminding ourselves that the commandments are all about love. Let's sing, Love is a Gracious Gift.
weeks, and you kind of cringe. I don't want to talk about this. But I'm going to challenge you on that, because I bet that you love rules. Now, you, you kind of hear that, and you go, what? But, but you do. If you are of a certain age, you will know the answer to this question. What is the first rule of Fight Club? Don't talk about Fight Club. Yeah, Fight Club came out in the 90s. I've actually never even seen the movie, and yet I know that rule. We all love rules. The problem is, we all love different rules. Maybe the rule you love is, don't snitch. Maybe the rule you love is, family first. Maybe your favorite rule is, don't betray a friend. Maybe it's, protect children. Maybe it's, you've worked hard, you deserve a little treat. Maybe it's, don't eat that, it's going to hurt your body. Maybe it's, I am a one matter voter, and that is the thing that matters. See, we all have rules, and we all try to live by those rules. Every single one of us. The problem comes when what I think the most important rule and what you think the most important rule is are different. Maybe your most important rule is family first. But that person's family rule, first rule is protect children. You see how those rules might fight each other? Maybe your favorite rule is you deserve a treat. And your favorite rule is, uh-uh, don't eat that. Can you see how those rules might conflict? Maybe your rule is, you vote for this because that is the most important thing. And your rule is, I, uh, you vote for this because that's the most important thing. And, and you have conflict there. So what's the most important rule? How, how do you decide whose rule you listen to? Uh, people have been arguing about this for literal millennia. In Jesus' day, the teachers of law would actually have huge arguments about this. You can read this in ancient Jewish scriptures where they'll talk about, well, this is the most important rule. No, no, this is the most important rule. Well, what about this? I mean, that's how lawyers make their living, right? Well, you know, the U.S. law code says this. Ah, it says that. Uh, which one's the most important? And, and you get all of these people arguing, well, what's the most important rule? Well, we're going to address that today. We're going to talk about the first commandment. As God says, this is what the most important rule is. Jesus himself has to answer that question. It is Tuesday of Holy Week. We'll look at that verse in just a second. It's Tuesday of Holy Week. On Friday, Jesus is going to be nailed to a cross. On Sunday, he's going to rise from the dead. But before that, on Tuesday, the Jewish religious leaders hate Jesus, and they are throwing all these questions at him, trying to get him to mess up, trying to get him to say something where they can go, ah, see, you're wrong, you deserve to die. And as all these questions are going on, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, eh, of all the commandments, which is the most important? So this teacher, apparently at least, was not directly involved with trying to get Jesus to trip up. He comes up, he sees, ah, oh, this Jesus guy, he's kind of smart. I'm going to ask him a question. And the original Greek here, you could also translate, of all the commandments, which is the first? What is the first one that you should listen to? I was, I should say this now, I, I, we replaced the batteries this morning, and it is still kind of not working well. So if I go, ah, it, it's, something is wrong with this, I don't know. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. So Jesus answers, okay, you want to know what the first commandment is, what the most important is? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's not a rule. That's not a commandment. It's not something you do. But Jesus starts by saying, we're going to say, who is the one who gets to lay down the first rule? 
So if you're having an argument with someone, the most important rule isn't yours. And it's not mine. It's not the government's. God says this. God is a lot bigger than me and a lot bigger than you. So if he says this is the most important rule, okay, I should probably listen to it. And the most important rule is love. It is not do this. It's not don't do that. It isn't family first. It isn't protect the children. It's love. Now, some of you who have been around for a while already know this. Um, in the original Greek language, there are all sorts of different rules for love, which is really handy. In our language, in English, I love my wife and I love pizza. I do not love them the same way. You get that, right? There's all sorts of different meanings for the word love. Well, that happened in Greek, and they just out use different words. There's the word uh, phileo, for instance, which means brotherly love, love between siblings. That is not the word that Jesus uses here. He doesn't say, love God like a brother. He could have used the word arao, that's erotic love. <laughs> Jesus does not use that one here. He uses agape. Agape is selfless love. Love that says, I don't care what you have done. I am going to love you. I don't care whether or not you're worthy of my love. I am going to love you. And Jesus says, that, that's the kind of love that you should have. And first, you are to love the Lord your God. Love God. Well, how far? With all your heart. Not love God and it's not love God and family. It's not love God and nation. Love God with all your heart. There's no and. And with all your soul. Another way to translate that in the Greek, soul is accurate, but another way to translate it is with every breath. With every breath that you take. If you know 80s music. I just got it stuck in your head. You're, you're, you're welcome. With every breath you take. Not just sitting in church, but when you're breathing at work. When you're breathing at school, when you're breathing watching the game, when you're breathing out on the golf course. Yes, God is even on the golf course, not just when you're swearing. Yeah. With all your mind. There's a lot of really smart people out there, and they will say things like, we have investigated the age of the world. It's several billion years old. And God says, I created the world several thousand years ago. I look at that with my mind, and I go, I'm going to serve God with my mind. I'm going to love him, so I'm going to trust what he says. Lots of really smart people will say, this is how relationships should work, that you make sure you move in together before you get married because that's the best way to figure it out. And God says, you shall not commit adultery. No, that's not how you work it. And I say, you know what? Even though these people seem really smart, I'm going to love God with my mind. I'm going to say he knows more than me. God says a lot of crazy stuff. Um, one of our members asked me some questions yesterday and asked, well, what is that about? And I went, uh, <laughs> God's smarter than me. He knows better than I do. And I love him with my mind. And with all your strength. Guys, you ever loved a girl so much that you went out and you did all of these amazing things for her? Maybe it was for a date. Maybe it was something else. You were loving her with all your strength. And, and, and now God says, no, you'd love me like that with all your strength. And Jesus says this, and it is crazy, but he's not saying anything new. This has been in the Bible many times. In the Old Testament, written about 1500 B.C., it says, love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws, and his commands always. It's always been about love. And that's why when Martin Luther wrote his catechism, he wrote the first commandment, you shall have no other gods. Well, what does that mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. If I fear someone more than I fear God, that person or that thing has become my God. If I love someone or something more than God, that thing has become my God. If I trust what someone says, if I trust them to help me more than I trust God, that person has become my God. And that's really scary. Going back to what Jesus said. The most important one, answer Jesus, is this. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. And it's fascinating that he, God, Jesus does say, yeah, you better love your neighbor. We're going to talk a lot about those commandments in the coming weeks. But what happens is so often we flip these two. We'll say, love God, and you'll say, well, I've never murdered anyone. Good! But that's not the first commandment. That's not the most important rule. Well, you know, I've never cheated on my spouse. Good! That's not the first rule. You know, I, I have always, always honored my parents. I will not believe you, but good! <laughs> but that's not the first commandment. It's the second. It's kind of like this. I want you to imagine that you visit a friend at their home for the first time, and they tell you as you get to the house, there are two rules here. One, don't burn the house down. Two, don't get mud on the carpet. And you come into the house, and you wipe your feet real well, and you come into the house, you don't track any mud on the carpet, and then you light the drapes on fire and the entire house burns down. And your friend is rightfully angry at you. You burn their house down. And you say with all seriousness, not as a joke, but I never got any mud on your carpet. If you were serious about that, your friend would be really angry with you, right? Yeah, sure, you kept the second commandment. Great. What about the first? Jesus says this is the most important. This is the number one rule. Love God with everything you have. And if you take this as seriously as God does, it is not a really happy thing. The book of Romans, written about uh, 60 or 70 AD, says this, if my clicker works. Oh, no, we're not getting to Romans yet. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there's no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbors yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And this guy was getting it. God actually gave the commandment to give these different offerings, to give these sacrifices. And this guy says, loving is more important than that. That going through the motions is not enough. That doing this stuff is not enough. If you don't do it with love, it doesn't matter. Imagine, I bring my wife a bouquet of flowers. They're gorgeous, and I hand them to her, and I give her a kiss on the cheek, and I am showing love to her. This is a good thing, right? Now imagine, instead of kissing her on the cheek, I bring her the bouquet of flowers, chuck them at her head, and I say, I hope you're happy now. Well, I did the same thing, right? I gave her a bouquet of flowers, but without love, it doesn't help. This guy is getting it, is that if you don't have the love, the rest doesn't matter. And Jesus responds, when Jesus saw that he'd answered wisely, he said to him, you're not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared him ask any more questions. Jesus doesn't say, you've got this. Good job. He says, oh, yeah, you're not far off. And that's really scary. Now we get to Romans. <laughs> now we know that whatever the law says, whatever the rules say, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. The first commandment is like a mirror. A mirror does not make you look good. The mirror does not make you look bad. If it's a good mirror, all it does is show you what you really look like. And Jesus lays out, this is the number one rule. And I look at that and I go, I'm not good enough. I've broken the rule. If your number one rule, the most important rule in your life is, do not betray friends. And I betray you. You're probably not going to be my friend anymore. I've broken your most important rule. And you're going to get rid of me. If I break God's number one rule, he should get rid of me. He should have nothing to do with me. 
and the only place that has nothing to do with God is hell. This is what the mirror shows. And this is why that man was not far from the kingdom of God. Because if you get that, your only response can be, God have mercy on me, a sinner. As we go through these Ten Commandments, it is going to be hard. So we're going to see this again and again. We're going to see this mirror again and again. But what God demands, Jesus fulfills. Many of you know this verse by heart. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. What God demands, he fulfills. God said, agape. And he said, I agape you. I love you. And I don't love you because you're nice. I don't love you because you follow the rules, because you don't. I love you anyway. And I love you so much, I'm going to send my son to the world. So you trust him? That's it. That's all you need. Jesus was here, and the night before he died, he said, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Not love each other and then I'll love you. Love each other just like I I agape you. I already do this. I already love you this much. And when Jesus went to the cross, God should have cut off contact with you, but instead he cut off contact with his own son. He took the punishment in your place. There's no punishment left. There's no judgment left. When God looks at you, he sees someone who has always obeyed that number one rule. Always. And when you know that, the commandment changes. Now, it's the exact same words. There's still that mirror there. But there's something else, too. There's a guide now. You shall have no other gods. Why would I want another god? You should fear God above all things. Why would I ever fear what anyone else says? My God says he loves me. Why would I fear someone else's judgment? Jesus took all the judgment away. I should love God above all things? Well, why wouldn't I? As good as the love of another human is, ain't no one has loved me as much as God. I should trust in God above all things? Well, why wouldn't I? Of course I'm going to trust him. Look at what he's done for me. He promised to save me, and he did it at great expense to himself. And now, instead of just being a mirror, it becomes a guide. And I say, I want to do this because Jesus has been so good to me. And again, we're going to see this pattern all throughout this series. That yes, each commandment is a mirror. I'm going to see myself and I'm going to go, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And then I'm going to see that God has had mercy on me. And I'm going to say, now I want to do this because God is good. Of course I want to respond that way. But it all starts here with rule number one. I'm going to invite you to say it with me. We're going to do this every week, too. It's good review. Some of you will have this memorized already. If you do, go ahead, don't look up. Um, I'm going to use that because I tend to slip up on memorized things. But let's speak the first commandment together. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Amen. And now this peace of God that is greater than we can understand will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord until he returns to bring you home to life everlasting. Now, we're going to continue with another song. Martin Luther wrote a song that has a verse for each of the Ten Commandments, and we are going to sing it every single week. But we're not going to sing every verse every single week. In fact, we will never sing every single verse in any given week. What we're going to do is he wrote an introductory verse and a couple verses at the end, and then we're going to sing in the middle whatever commandment that we just went through as a good review. So let's join together in singing selected verses from the Ten Commandments are the law.
what you say. Christians have done this for millennia by writing creeds. This is a summary of what we believe. <coughs> we get to do that now. Let's stand and speak together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. One of the ways we get to show love to God is by giving back to Him. One of the ways we do that is with an offering. Uh, there's an offering plate in the back. Feel free to make use of that if you wish. If you're a guest, do not feel any obligation to give. This is just one of the ways that we show love to God here. For now, let's continue with prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you loved us first. While we were still sinners, you loved us, and you sent your Son to die for us. Fill us with awe and wonder. Lead us to confess our sins and to trust you for forgiveness. And then change us so that that law becomes a guide and we listen to you, <clears throat> that we fear, love, and trust in you above all things. We thank you for the gifts you've given us in this life, that you show us love through sunshine and rain, through harvest, through plenty, through friends and family. Help us to be thankful for the life you've given us, to praise you for the good things that you surround <coughs> us with. Protect your servants in this world. Protect those who protect us, whether they work in the medical field, as police officers, as firefighters, in the military. Send your holy angels to protect them. Be with those who travel. Guide them and bring them home safely to wherever their homes may be. Lord, hear us as we bring you our private prayers. Now, Heavenly Father, take all that we are and all that we have and use it to your glory. Amen. And as you taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who's called us to be his own, so that we may live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, 
We praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
Thanksgiving. of the heavenly banquet that you've given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift you've fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your spirit help us live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you gracious to you. Lord, look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the blessing once more to each other. God be with you till we meet again. <laughs> 